Lord Howe Island is only a two-hour flight from Sydney, but it's probably Australia's best-kept secret. Boasting pristine beaches, spectacular volcanic peaks and verdant rainforests, it's also home to the world's most southern coral reef. And it's a treasure trove of marine life and seabirds. But there's trouble in paradise, although not of the island's own making. Despite its isolation, Lord Howe is suffering from the impact of a global problem, plastic pollution. Lord Howe Island is as picturesque as it is remote. About 700 kilometres northeast of Sydney, it's World Heritage listed and was declared a marine park in 2000, an acknowledgement of the spectacular biodiversity of marine life here. And for bird watchers, it's paradise. People from all over the world come to experience this. We've got more seabirds breeding than anywhere else in Australia. We've actually got 14 different species, probably five, six 600,000 individual seabirds breeding here over summer. Ian Hutton is Lord Howe's resident bird expert. He fell under the island's spell 30 years ago and has been studying the bird life here and conducting tours ever since. The birds here have been breeding on uh, this island for millions of years with no predators. See, large mammals never made it to Lord Howe Island, so there's nothing to chase and eat the birds, so they're completely unafraid. And you and me walking on the beach, they just see part of us as part of nature drifting past, and they're not too concerned. So, yeah, it's a great experience. The island has a tiny population of about 350 people and has some of the best conservation policies in the world. But in recent years there have been growing concerns about the impact of a problem already recognised in the North Pacific Ocean, plastic pollution. It's a problem worldwide. Uh, it's something that's been noted in the Northern Hemisphere, the North Pacific, uh, probably for 20 years, but it's only now just being noticed in the Southern Hemisphere. Lord Howe is a tiny speck in the middle of the Tasman Sea, a long way from anywhere. But these waters are awash with plastic debris, not from the island, but from towns and cities hundreds of kilometres away. There's a large water current called the East Australian Current that flows right down the east coast, uh, Queensland, New South Wales, and more or less swirls around in the Tasman Sea. And it's that water current that's bringing the plastic towards Lord Howe Island. Some years back, Ian Hutton started noticing assorted pieces of plastic on the island's beaches and forest floors. He began measuring and collecting it and was dismayed at what he found. Ian, there's an astonishing assortment of things in here. I mean, this, this looks like a, a little hair clip, a child's hair clip. Um, milk, top. milk top of yeah. some sort, wine, uh, wine lid, biro. It's amazing, the diversity of stuff. You yeah. just wouldn't believe it. In Something from aerosol yeah. spray. Incredible. It is. Probably the biggest item we get in terms of numbers of identifiable pieces are these balloon ties. So when oh. people let go a party balloon, maybe at a football match they might let go a thousand, these go up and out over the ocean and drop. The species most at risk from the plastic so far is the flesh-footed shearwater or mutton bird. Lord Howe is home to the only breeding population of these birds in Eastern Australia. There's one over here I can see. If we just watch that hole there. Mm -hmm. At this time of year, the only way to see the mutton birds on land is at night in the dense palm forests. They dig a burrow two or three metres long. They make a little nest chamber at the end. And at this time of the year, one of the birds is down there sitting on the egg. The other one of the couples out at sea feeding and they swap over every few days. But what the birds pick up for their young at sea might not be food, but plastic. The adults flying over the ocean have picked it up, swallowed it, brought it back to their chicks and fed it to the chicks. Sometimes the chicks, if they get fed too much plastic, they'll die down the end of the burrow. If they come out in April to fly away and they haven't been given too much, they can cough it up. We're just going to open the stomach up completely now and start taking some of the pieces out. So we can see right away that there is a very significant quantity of plastic inside of this poor bird. 
When researcher Jennifer Lavers dissected this bird, she found more than 200 pieces of plastic in its stomach. Um, uh, this kind of speaks for itself. This is shocking. We did find a bird with 274 pieces of plastic in its stomach and it was the equivalent of a human carrying 12 kilograms of plastic in the stomach. So it was 15% of the body weight of that chick. Found some. Oh, yeah, that looks awesome. Locals believe education is a major part of solving the plastic pollution issue, and that starts at home. Children here at the most remote school in New South Wales are working on a mural made of plastics found on their beaches with the help of artist Margaret Murray. They went down to the beach the morning we started on this and um, spent the morning collecting, sorting, um, you know, finding all the stuff. We're hoping it will give a message that other people will see and think. That's all come off the beaches here. This is Ned's Beach, consistently voted one of the cleanest beaches in Australia. And this really brings home the problem with plastics. In about 30 seconds walking along the shore here, I've managed to pick up probably about 20 pieces of plastic, bottle lids, all sorts of debris, and this is deadly for the birds. As well as continuing research on land, this year specially designed nets are being towed in the waters around the island to measure exactly how much plastic is floating there. So it's very much community driven that Lord Howe Island Museum have formed a plastics committee on the island. We provided some funding to do some sampling on the surface. This is, this is one of many places in the world which are doing these samples and try and get back to the plastics industry and people to make a decision to reduce plastics and reuse what we've got. The population of mutton birds has dropped by 30% in the last 40 years. It's feared more species will be affected if the plastics problem isn't turned around. It is a global lesson and it needs very much communities to, to like the island, Lord Howe Island Committee have done. They're trying to recycle, reuse the plastics, try and use glass products and try and use uh, the, get the plastics industry to reduce some of the um, amount of plastic they use, especially the stuff that's not biodegradable and um, will stay in the ocean for many, many years. Locals call this place the last paradise and are doing all they can to protect it. Raising awareness is one thing but initiating change is a far more complex process. Certainly is a very special place, and that story was produced by Ben Hawke.